Hi everyone, my name is Subhuman Bansal. I'm a postdoc at the University of Pennsylvania. And today I'll present work on satisfying in quantitative games. This is joint work with Krishnendu Chatterjee from IST Austria and Moshe Wardi from Rice University. Our work is motivated by synthesis from quantitative constraints. Synthesis, of course, is the problem of constructing a system from a high level description of the desired properties. In this case, the desired properties are the quantitative properties of systems. And a specific concrete example is to design a controller for a robot that cleans your apartment with respect to its uh, battery consumption. Now, in most existing formulations of synthesis, the focus is on searching for a solution which is optimal with respect to the quantitative constraint. So the question becomes to solve a problem where we want to find a controller which consumes minimal battery, uh, which has minimal battery consumption. But in, in a lot of applications, optimal solutions may not be required. For example, here, we could have alternately asked for searching for a controller which ensures that the battery may never go below a critical threshold. Of course, this formulation may not return the optimal solution, but, it mo but in most cases, the solution is good enough. It's good enough with respect to the application we are looking at. And this problem, which is to search for a solution that is good enough, is the problem of satisficing. This word was originated in economics by Herb Simons. And as demonstrated through this example, it could also have, uh, it could be of much relevance to reasoning about quantitative properties in formal methods as well. There could be additional benefits of satisficing also. One, that it may be computationally easier to solve satisficing than it is to solve optimization. This is possibly because intuitively, this could be because um, there are, there could be, uh, there are fewer restrictions on good enough solutions than there are on optimal ones, and hence searching for them may be easier. In another example of it, their benefits, a lot of times quantitative constraints are combined with temporal constraints. However, optimal solutions do not combine well with other hard constraints. On the contrary, because good enough solutions are quote unquote softer constraints, they may be more flexible to be able to combine with other hard constraints. Despite these potential benefits, the problem of satisficing has received little to no attention in the context of synthesis from quantitative constraints. And that is what we hope to start changing with this work. In this work, we formulate the problem of satisficing in quantitative games and present two approaches to solve satisficing. In the first approach, we saw satisficing using the optimization problem instead and are indeed disappointed because through this method, we see no benefits of satisficing over optimization, which is why we present another approach. And in this approach, we do not use optimization at all. Instead, we use methods based on automata only. And through this, we are able to show several benefits of satisficing both on the theoretical and the empirical front. Therefore, overall, we are able to show that satisficing is indeed an able alternative to, uh, to optimization in quantitative games, and therefore possibly also in quantitative synthesis. So let's begin with what quantitative games are. Quantitative game is really a turn-based game played on a weighted graph. So there are two states, uh, so there are two players and two types of states. The states could be circle states or square states, and each player owns exactly one type of state. A play in a game is simply an infinite sequence, an infinite path in the game, which begins in the initial state, V0 in this case, indicated by the tiny arrow. You can think of a play as being generated by the two players moving a token along the edges. At the start of the game, this token is placed at the initial state, and from there on, whichever player owns the current location of the token gets to decide which state to push the token to next. And of course, the next state has to be a neighboring state. Uh, every path in this weighted graph is associated with a weighted sequence, and that is used to compute the cost of a play, which is nothing else but the discounted sum of the play's weighted sequence. As you can see on the slide, for a weighted sequence A, 
and a discount factor D greater than one, the discounted sum computes the sum of diminishing returns. We assume the players are adversarial towards one another. So one player is a maximizing player, which maximizes the cost of plays. The other is a minimizing player. And finally, a strategy is nothing but just a set of instructions which tells a player where to move the token to based on the history of a play. Now, finally, I can tell you what the title of this, of this paper means. I'll define the satisficing problem in quantitative games. In our definition of satisficing, to capture the idea of good enough, we use threshold bounds. And the idea is that the agents should obey this threshold bound. More formally, with respect to the maximizing player, the satisficing problem is defined as follows. Given a threshold value, does there exist a strategy that can ensure that the cost of all the plays exceeds the threshold value? Let's try to concretize this through an example. Suppose the square states are owned by the maximizing agent and the circle states are owned by the minimizing agent. And now I want to know whether the threshold value of half, and now I want to know whether there exists a satisfying strategy for the maximizing player with respect to threshold value half. And the answer to this is yes, because as long as the maximizing player remains in state V naught for a good enough, of, good enough amount of times before moving to any other state, that strategy will be a satisfying strategy. The exact number of times the maximizing player should stay inside V naught is determined by what exactly the discount factor is, but we don't need to get into those details. For sake of succinctness throughout the rest of this talk, I will say the max player wins to refer to saying that there exists a satisfying, uh, satisfying strategy for the max player. By the way, all of this could be defined with respect to the minimizing player also, but in this talk, without the loss of generality, we will discuss everything with respect to the maximizing player. The first observation we have is that satisficing can be solved via optimization. Optimization is, is a, one of the most fundamental problems on quantitative games. It is to compute the optimal cost, which is the cost gained when both of the players are playing their best strategy. Optimization is known to be decidable. It is pseudo-polynomial time, so hence fairly, um, fairly efficient. And just for the sake, just so that we're on the same page again, on this simple game where the maximizing player owns the uh, square states, the optimal strategy is one in which it remains in V0 forever. Any other strategy is suboptimal. Now, the algorithm for satisficing is very simple. The motto is, in fact, if you can optimize, you can satisfy. And thus, simply comparing the com optimal cost to the threshold value gives you a necessary and sufficient condition for the max player to win, and that completes the algorithm. Really simple. The issue with this algorithm is that it exposes none of the benefits of satisficing. First of all, this algorithm has the same first case complexity as optimization. There is no reduction in complexity. And second, when satisficing goals are combined with temporal goals, if satisficing is being solved via optimization, the algorithm could be unsound. For example, in this game, had I asked to search for a strategy which was both satisficing with threshold half and satisfying the temporal goal to visit P1, then of course, such strategies exist. However, if satisficing was being solved via optimization, then the policy return would be one which remains in V0, and that of course does not satisfy the temporal goal, which is why this algorithm would be unsound. So, so, simple algorithm, but does not expose any of the benefits. In fact, this hints at one of the, one of the, most, uh, one of the most commonly appearing issues in combining quantitative and qualitative goals, and that is of uh, incompatibility of techniques. Oftentimes, quantitative goals use techniques such as numerical methods, while qualitative goals use techniques such as automata-based methods, and they're so unlike each other that the resulting algorithms end up having poor guarantees which is why in the other algorithm for satisficing that we wish to develop, our goal will be 
whether we can solve satisfying using automata based methods. If we could do this, then we could eliminate the incompatibility of techniques and hopefully seamlessly combine both quantitative and qualitative goals with respect to satisfying on the quantitative part, of course. So to start developing this algorithm, let's first take a step back and try to understand what the most fundamental operation in satisfying is. And I claim it is the operation of comparison. And here's why. Recall the maximizing player wins if the cost of plays exceeds a threshold value. This is nothing else but saying that the discounted sum of a sequence exceeds a threshold, exceeds a fixed value. So if we knew how to perform this comparison, then we would have made some progress towards solving satisfying. Observe this comparison required does not require us to do any optimization. Perhaps we won't even need to compute the discounted sum of a sequence. All we need is the ability to compare. And that's the fundamental problem, the problem of comparison. This is exactly what, uh, this is some work that I have been doing for the past several years in the form of a compare to automata. The idea here is to convert the comparison problem into a problem on automata. The treatment of weight sequences under compared to automata is that every weight sequence is simply an infinite length word. So if the weight sequences are bounded by this uh, by a value mu, then we can think of weight sequences as infinite words over the finite alphabet ranging from minus mu to mu. And then a compared to automata is formally defined as follows. For a given discount factor d greater than 1 and any equality or inequality relation r and an integer mu, mu of course uh, goes back to the finite alphabet, the compared to automata accepts a weight sequence a if and only if its discounted sum with a relates to the value 0 with a given relation r. Now, one of the key results here is that compared to automata is omega regular if and only if the discount factor is an integer, which means that when uh, the discount factor is an integer, then uh, comparison, the comparison problem reduces to membership of a weight sequence inside an omega regular automata. Uh, this can be strengthened a bit more because we also know that when discount factors are integers, then the comparator is a much simpler automata it's actually simply a deterministic safety or co-safety automata. So given this knowledge of compared to automata, how do we incorporate it into solving satisfying? For the time being, let's assume that the threshold value is zero. So a max square will win if and only if discounted sum of a sequence is greater than zero. When the discount factor is an integer, this is equivalent to saying that the weight sequence is accepted by an appropriate comparator. And thus, the winning condition for the max player is necessarily and sufficiently captured by the compared automata. And lastly, because this compared automata is either a safety or co-safety automata, we really just have a very simple winning condition on omega, a very simple omega regular objective to solve the max, uh, to solve satisfying for the max player. And this gives rise to a very simple scheme. We can leverage existing algorithms for solving games with omega regular objectives to solve satisfying now, which is to take uh, the input quantitative game, take a product with the compared to automata, and uh, the resulting game would be either a safety or a reachability game. It's safety or reachability because of the nature of the compared to automata. This whole algorithm works perfectly well, except that there is one caveat, and that is that this algorithm works only in the case for uh, zero threshold value. For our purpose, this is not sufficient because in our case, the threshold value arises from the satisfying problem, and that would be any arbitrary rational number. So in this paper, we extend the existing results on compared automata to allow comparisons with arbitrary threshold values. And for this, uh, and, and we're able to show that the previous results on compared to automata extend here as well. We are able to construct the uh, deterministic safety co-safety automata without much increase in their size either. Uh, for those familiar with the literature and comparators, um, 
simple methods, the core idea is that even the threshold value B, it can be expressed as a lasso word. So perhaps we could do some kind of automata manipulation to be able to construct this comparator, but simple techniques will not work, which is why we actually have to go in, white box the comparator constructions and incorporate this lasso word representation right from the start to be able to get compact representations of, um, of the comparator. So the same scheme works again, uh, the, the, the same pipeline works, except that now we, it also works for uh, arbitrary rational numbers, arbitrary rational numbers for the threshold value. And therefore what we've been able to show is that when the discount factor is an integer, satisfying reduces to solving either a safety or a reachability game. And in fact, this algorithm is linear in the size of the input game. V and E refer to vertices and edges in the quantitative game and mu and N come from the size of the comparator. Um, I haven't uh, gotten into this in the talk, but in the paper we show that um, for the value iteration algorithm for optimization, the complexity of that is V square E. So this is much more efficient than that algorithm. In fact, the benefits are also shown in, in empirical evaluations. Uh, um, comparator-based satisfying solves many more benchmarks and optimization-based method. And so is true for the scalability trends. Um, here, the, here we are plotting number of states in the quantitative game against an amount of time taken, both in log scale. And you can clearly see both efficiency and scalability of the comparator-based method. And coming to the last point of how do we combine LTL objectives with satisfying? and you may have already guessed the answer, it is to take another synchronized product with the parity automata corresponding to the LTL formula. And in this case, we get a sound and complete algorithm that can solve, that combines both satisfying goals with LTL formulas. So to summarize, this talk is about satisfying in quantitative games, and we have shown that satisfying could be an effective alternative to optimization. However, the benefits of satisfying are shown only when we use comparator-based approach, which shows that comparator-based approach is indeed a good way to solve the satisfying problem. The one drawback of the current algorithm is that it works only on integer discount factors and not on fractional discount factors. That work is currently under uh, in, in progress, where we show that although it's not possible to construct omega regular comparators for fractional discount factors, we can construct comparators for approximations and use that in various applications under planning for planning under adversarial conditions. In terms of future work, there are really two directions what could pursue from the here on. One is to improve the current algorithm and to do it by leveraging progress in qualitative reasoning. Uh, so I can imagine because all of our techniques boil down to automata, one could imagine using several kinds of progress is made in qualitative reasoning, be it symbolic reasoning, be it bounded reasoning, and uh, develop much improved algorithms for performing quantitative synthesis using qualitative methods only. The other direction is about the satisfying problem itself. There is no need, there is no reason one should restrict satisfying problem to the current domain of, uh, of quantitative games. One could also explore satisfying in, in, in multi-agent games, probabilistic environments, with or without partial information. And it would be interesting to see if satisfying gives benefits even in those domains. Thank you for your attention.